Hello my friends and welcome to another episode of Affinity Photo Tutorials. And today I'm going to show you how to get your file print ready if you want to do a poster or a postcard, even if you want to print on a car. Um, there's a lot of different options how to print stuff. And um, this was requested by someone from my community. Um, before we get started, if you want to support me, if you want to suggest topics, head over to Patreon. You can support me. It's just $1 a month. You get a lot of benefits like unlocking my Affinity Photo files. You get feedback on your creations. We can live chat on Discord. So a lot of great benefits. Okay, so this is for you and how to print stuff. Let's get started. I selected this site. I'm not a customer of them. I don't know them because I'm in Germany. So this is a, I guess, American uh, company. They have inches. I don't know even how to measure these kind of things, but you know, this is the more important part, you know, and uh, you should go to the company page where you want your stuff printed because there they have all the information you need. But every company is a little bit different. So you should really go to the company page, look at the product, and there they have something like upload info, start files, stuff like that, and uh, provide you with everything you need. And in this case, you can see here, the most important part is the bleed size. Bleed size means between the red line and the green line, they will cut somewhere in here. So this is where your content is really safe. Nothing will get cut or lost. The green line is where it's really much, there's a lot of danger. Maybe it should switch the colors around, I don't know. Um, and to give you a better idea of how this works, they prepare download start files down here. Um, so you select your product. This is just postcards. They have a lot of other products. And there you can select your file format. We will use Photoshop because Affinity Photo can open these files. You go and download, download it, open it in Affinity Photo and use it as the base to create your design. For our German customers, here's the same thing, or not just, sorry, German customers, German viewers, I'm sorry. Um, here is the, here's a German company. It's kind of good. Um, I had some bad experiences too, but you can use them. They're very cheap of what they do and they have good customer service actually. And here they tell you everything like the resolution, the bleed, uh, the color format, stuff like that. The cool thing is you don't have to worry about that at all uh, if you download the file. So you go to details and there it says Vorlage and you can just download the file that you need. Um, and it's Photoshop format again. So everything is in there. Let's head over to Affinity Photo and I already opened both of these. So this is the American company. This is the German company. It's very strict and reduced to the max. So there's only what you need. <laughs> no extra service, just what you need. But it's exactly enough to work with your stuff. So that is really good. And on the American company, you have a lot of service here. They give you a lot of information. So they want to make really sure that you create the design uh, that you want to print. And here it's very good for our tutorial because... Uh, we can see a lot of stuff that's important. So like I said, the safe zone, this is where all your content is safe. Nothing will get cut or lost. This is the outside of your print where the dotted line is. And between the dotted line and the green line, somewhere here, they will cut the paper. Um, reason for that is because they put a lot of prints on a really big piece of paper and cut uh, print all these prints together. And then they cut it afterwards and sort them for you. Um, so this is why they have to cut all this. Every print has to be cut. And um, what you want to do, like they show here, this is the safe zone, but don't put your design right here on this edge. Put it a little bit inside. So it has a little bit place, a little bit space to breathe. It doesn't look like, how can I say, constipated. I know it's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. The design looks really pressed and unhealthy. Give it a little space to breathe. It's really important. So um, if you create a text, let's, let's say print here, um, don't put a text right here. You can, but it's maybe not a good idea because it's really close to the, por to the border uh, where it is going to be cut. So give it a little bit space uh, to the edge of the actual flyer. It looks a lot better. Um, an important thing you want to do if you have color in the background, like they show here, you see, there is full color, everything. Don't stop with the color here. Don't stop here. Don't stop here. 
don't even stop here. Go over the edge. It doesn't matter. Because uh, you, you can't see the other parts and you want to make sure that everything is in that color. You see, it has to be everywhere. And this should be on the back. If it's, if it's the background color, it should be in the background, of course. Um, the problem is, if you would stop the color here on this edge, it could be that they cut here and then they you have white paper. So it looks really crappy. It looks bad. Don't do that. Pull the color out over all of the paper if you have a colored background. And uh, so this makes sure that it will actually be everywhere uh, on your flyer. Okay. Um, by the way, and this is really cool. I didn't know. I've never seen a print company do that. They have two layers here. You should delete these layers so they don't get printed by accident. But they have a second layer here. And this is probably for the background if you want to make a postcard. So it tells you where the stamp goes, tells you where the address goes. It tells you everything about different areas where you can put stuff. And uh, the post office barcode make marking only. I even don't know what this is. Uh, probably some kind of internal American system on how to send letters. I don't know. Uh, but they put everything here so you can do a really professional postcard. Uh, with this, they explain here what is what. So this is really cool. In the German version, you just get a blue line, and this is uh, well, well, they cut between this blue line and that, and the rest you have to figure out yourself. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, well, uh, but, but it's it's very similar. They I don't know why they have such a big uh, wait why they have such a big bleed area here. But anyway, so you have a little bit. You have a preview of the safe zone. And here, if you do the same thing, like I said, if you create text like right uh, print here again, um, don't put it here. Don't put it here. Push it inward. So there's a really really nice space um, to give your design uh, enough room to breathe. Okay. Uh, what else is interesting? Oh, yeah. If you gonna print colors, solid colors are very difficult because depending on the paper, on the print process, on the print colors they use, on the coding they put on the print, color will always change. So even if you use the same print color on the same paper, but one is coded, the other one is not coded, um, the color looks different. So there is no guarantee how your color will look, none at all. You can order a proof print, so they will print just one of your um, prints to give you a, a preview of what the other prints will look like. Um, it's kind of expensive, but if you do an advertisement and you want to make sure that your stuff looks good to your customers, you probably want to invest a little bit of money into getting the right colors, the exact colors. Of course, there is something like Pantone. It's a it's a company where they have these pre-printed color examples, really expensive. You see like this example here, this, um, how can I say, set, color bridge set costs $300. And these are very specific colors that the print companies can buy and they have some on stock, but a very limited selection of these print colors. And every one of these colors is a is a print layer. So you have to pay for each color extra. This is really only useful if this is your brand color and you absolutely must have it. And your advertisement um, campaign is really expensive, stuff like this. Otherwise, just order a test print and see if the color turns out good. Or another trick that I always suggest to my customers is don't use uniform colors in the background and just take a photo or leave it white or do some other stuff um, because then the margin of error is much, much slower, uh, much, much lower. Um, for example, if you put a picture like here in the background, the colors will be different, but the picture will still look good. So it's, it's a workaround. It's very nice and it works almost every time. And um, another thing you should know, if you buy stock photos from professional pages, the pictures are mostly professionally prepared for print. So um, they have already adjusted the colors. They have already adjusted the shadows, the contrast. So it looks good on print. So this is a very good benefit of getting professional stock pictures instead of using your own stuff. Um, you can adjust them in your Affinity Photo program, but the problem is you probably don't have professional 
how can I say, designer equipment. You don't have a measured screen. You can buy a measuring device for your screen. So it, it sits on your screen in the measuring process, has a little camera inside, and then shows test pictures. And the software will adjust your screen so it's perfect. And what you see on the screen is approximate to what the original color will look like. Of course, the print color still is different because the print process changes the color. So, um, yeah, this is a bit complicated, but uh, it's it's not so hard. If you, if you have a lot of color in the background, then there shouldn't be much of a problem. The other thing, like I said before, if you want to print on a car, there, there isn't even a system. There is no color system in a photo program that you could use as a paint color for a car. And the reason for that is that you have uh, car colors that you couldn't even um, uh, have in, let's say, metallic color. You can't, you can't, car, you can't even have them on a screen. You can't represent them on a screen as a color, stuff like this. It's, it's impossible. You can't do this in Photoshop. You can't, you don't have a gold color. You don't have a, a kind of these kind of special things here with uh, this, um, how do you say in English? Matte look? I don't know. So you have to ask the print shop. There's a lot of crazy stuff like this, uh, where the color changes uh, depending on the angle you view the car. So um, if you want to do stuff like this or even normal colors, ask the print store, call them, ask them, send them the test file, say, hey, is this right? Will this color turn out like this if you print it on my car? And they will measure the color of your design. They will measure the color of the stuff they have on stock or the colors they mix for you and will say, okay, this will look like that. So this is, you have to go uh, through this uh, if you want to do something on a car. Um, okay, but now to the, to the meaty part, to the very interesting part is how to export this. Uh, so let's take this. And uh, let's just have this layer here. Um, you should delete these layers in the background. By the way, let's, I will just make a design. Let's place a picture here. Uh, oh God, uh, where is it? Replace sky. Let's take this one, put it in here. It's way too big for our design. Where, where is it? There we go, sorry. Okay, so print. Okay, so let's say this would be your design that you want to print. Uh, print. So uh, we have the text, it's inside of the safe zone. It's far enough away from the edges, so there is. it has room to breathe. We have a picture in the background. Uh, you can delete all of these other layers because you don't need them. You don't want to send them to the printer. Uh, so delete those. And now you only have the layers that you actually need to send. And now you go up to file and then you go to export. And then you just go to PDF for print and actually everything is prepared for you in this. Affinity made sure that everything, all the settings are the right way, uh, but you can check them. If you go here on more, there's all the information that you want to look at. And um, that's the right files. You have the layers inside, stuff like that. And the important part here is that it says embed fonts, all fonts and subset fonts. Uh, so the fonts will be still in font format and not in pixel format, which is important, uh, especially if it is very small font, like on business cards. Uh, so it's sharp in the print. You can send it as pixel. So uh, it will be a little bit unsharp, but it's good enough for reading. I don't suggest it. Uh, but if you have no other way, you can actually send just a JPEG file. It's good enough. They even suggest it on the page. You see, they say we accept JPEG files. They have no problem with that because it works. It's a little bit unsharp on the fonts, but if it's big fonts like this one, doesn't matter. If it's a very small font like on business card, then it matters. And um, so, yeah, you just export this. Let's go again. You go on file. You go on export, you go on PDF, you go on PDF for print. It sets everything like you need it. You can check it if you want. All the fonts are included and the subsets. 
and then you just click on export and go, it's ready. And um, if you have a flyer or you have a two-sided print, you have to make one of those for the front and one of those for the back. And I really suggest to you, if you export them, um, again, export PDF, if you export them, name them one front, the other one back. So the print shop knows this is the front, this is the back, okay? It's really important, I always do that. Um, and don't put it in one file because it's all everything is in here. You have to do two PDF files, one for the front, one for the back. Okay, so this is it's not it's not very hard. You can do it. Um, it's very easy. Um, what else? If you want to have something, for example, you want to print this, but then you want to have a shiny heart here, and it's not a color. It's just like a shiny layer um, that is printed on top. Of course, this is extra cost, um, but let's say you want to have a heart here that reflects in the sun. So if you look at the right angle, um, you see it. And if you look at the other angle, you don't see it because it's completely transparent. Um, you just make this as a layer and you can name this layer. Ask. I would call the company and ask them, what is your requirement? How should this look in my file? Uh, usually it's just one layer and you say, this is the shiny layer here in the layer name. And um, then they will know and they will use this layer to print the shiny color on this, this special coding that's reflective. Of course, um, you can also make your text shiny. So the rest is not shiny, but just the text is shiny. So you just duplicate the text and say, uh, this is the shiny layer. And bam, they will know, okay, this one should be shiny. The rest should not be shiny and Good enough. And don't don't worry, they will understand what you mean. Just call them, say, hey, I want this, I want that. And they will help you out because they they deal with a lot of, um, how to say, laymen, normal people. So not just professional people with all their lingo and stuff. They will help you out with whatever they need. This is why they are so helpful. Prepare all these files and help you where they can uh, with the printing process. So don't be afraid to ask anything. There is nothing to simple to ask you know they they will be happy to help you because of course you're a customer they want your money so they are helpful to you um okay i think basically this is everything you need to know about how to print stuff and it's not that hard it's very easy it was kind of a long video i'm sorry about that because there's a lot of things a lot of information to talk about um but yeah oh i want to tell you one more thing if you want to create something. For example, you want to have a plastic foil, um, a sticker. You want to have a transparent sticker with just your text in it. So you have just this layer. Make sure, make absolutely sure that the background is transparent. Like here, you see this checkerboard. And normally in the, in the, in the prepared file, it's already like this. You see, if I hide the background checkerboard, which means it's transparent. If you print it like this on a transparent foil, on a transparent sticker, it will be white. They will print a white color because you made it white. If you hide this, it's transparent or better delete it. And you have this checkerboard, it's going to be transparent. So you have only the text. So you can do really cool stuff. For example, if you have a shop and you want to stick something in the window for your winter sale or spring sale or whatever, and you just want to have the text, but there's some foil around it, um, you can do it like this, stuff like that, yeah? Okay, so that's it. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you have more questions about this topic, please ask in the comments. And um, if you want to support me again, you can go over to Patreon, become a supporter, become a patron of my channel, and then you get more say in the choice of the topics and you get a lot of other benefits um, that support you in getting a better designer, better creator. And yeah, thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.